Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is what new plot lines would you like to see in your genre of choice? Well, my answer in the words of the politician consists of three parts. Part one, I don't think potentially there can be any new plot lines. I, I've just finished reading a book that suggests that there are 36 different stories in the world. So everything else is just a nuanced variation of that. There are some people who suggest an even lower number than 36, but I don't think anyone studying literary theory is out there saying, yes, and here's a plot line that's never been done. So it's all a little bit of, we'll paint this red instead of blue. We'll have this character be female rather than male, but very almost superficial rather than actually a new plot line. And genre is really just, and I'm probably going to incur the eternal ire of literary fiction believers here, just a skin on the top of a story. The plot line set in space is the same as the plot line set in Camelot is the same as the plot line set in London East One. Again, it's just a trapping over the top of a plot line. So, I don't think there can be new plot lines in my genre of choice from that perspective. But I'd like to be wrong about that. Which brings me on to the second part of my answer. Surprise! I like books sometimes where I don't expect what's going to happen. So I'd like a plot line to surprise me, which means the plot lines I'd like to see are the plot lines that I can't identify because if I could identify them, they wouldn't be a surprise. So something unexpected. A plot line I'd never seen before or a twist on a plot line is whilst the plot lines can be the same we read for the trappings so trappings that make one of the 36 8 27 or odegra number of plot lines there are out there new to me rather than new in the sense of being different structurally so what, and moving on to part three, if anything, would I like to see plot lines wise that isn't a surprise to me? Well, my two favoritest genres, to the extent that I have favorite genres, are vampire fiction and Lovecraftian fiction. And I have a suggestion for each of those. I like paranormal romance, but the one thing that always stands out in paranormal romance series is that <clears throat> there is the evil, dark, stubbly cousin, brother, friend, or whatever, who's an utter unpleasant character not necessarily an actual villain, but is unpleasant, rude, abrasive, and is there in the background. And you pretty much guarantee that once a character like that's come in, in one to three books time, we'll have a volume where they're the leading man, and it's always a leading man, <clears throat> and they'll meet the woman who can tame them and I'd like 
just wants for there to be this abrasive character <clears throat> who's there, who's rude to everyone, who's off doing his supernatural thing, defending the supernatural world with his supernatural powers from the supernatural threat he was supernaturally created to supernaturally defend against. And then there's a book, one to two to three volumes time, about him meeting a woman who he gets stuck with for some supernatural reason while supernaturally defending the world against supernatural threats with his supernatural supernaturalness. And he's rude and abrasive to her and they don't fall in love and live happily ever after. She goes that you're not a very nice person. He goes, I'm saving the world from supernatural evil. She goes, that doesn't mean you have to be an utter git to everyone. And they don't end up in a relationship. He ends up carrying on doing his thing, a bitter loner. And she has her life better because the supernatural threat that pulled them together has been taken away by him. And it doesn't matter that they're not together because she's not any kind of leverage over him. She hasn't married into this supernatural dynasty that constantly has threats hurled against it. She isn't going to accidentally discover that her best friend is dating a werewolf because she doesn't matter anymore. And we have a real life thing in which just once this character who's introduced as being utterly horrible in book seven doesn't turn out to be just a misunderstood softy in book nine. Not because I don't like the paranormal romance format, because I do, but I don't like being able to predict with such ease that <clears throat> Mr. Loney McLona is going to, in two books time, meet a woman who stutters in the presence of anyone over five foot eight, apart from him. Just once I'd like to see something different. And you could still have a supernatural paranormal romance plot running in parallel to it, or you could use it as one of the getting from bit to bit of the meta plot books, but not actually have the romance in it. Although, as an author, I accept that that would be a brave marketing strategy for a paranormal romance author to take. But uh, moving on to Lovecraftian fiction, as with all things Lovecraft, I prefer the spiritual cosmic dread side of it to the name dropping tentacles side of it. I have nothing against a good bit of tentacle where you've got the creatures from other stories coming back and you get a slightly different viewpoint on them from the, another story that mentioned them. But what I like about that is the slightly different viewpoint on the creature, not the creature itself. So I'd like a little bit of Lovecraftian, a little bit more Lovecraftian fiction that focuses on the metaphysics things that aren't overtly Lovecraftian but have the same feeling, like, and I refer to this a lot because I absolutely love it, the Book of Lost Doors series by Misha Burnett about existential otherness. It's not evil because the frame of reference is different enough that it makes good and evil the dualism, manichaeism, the whole basis of patriarchal religion that has driven through Western literature for centuries irrelevant. That a universe that doesn't hate us, a universe that just isn't consistently habitable to us, it's lumpy, there are bits that we don't work well with. We perceive them as evil or we perceive them as physics or we perceive them as opportunities and someone who's prepared to change to fit those lumps 
will seem on the outside to be mad or evil or a monster but from their perspective it's the people who refuse to take the opportunity to explore the physics to abandon a theory that doesn't fit all the evidence who are mad or monsters so more creepy otherness less oh no deep ones have started working in Woolworths by wearing paper bags over their heads. Our plucky reporter sees the man remove the paper bag from his head and is shocked by the rubbery deep oneness. Shenanigans ensue. Outside of those two, uh, I'm a big speculative fiction fan in general. I'm a big, pretty much most books fan in general. So. The one plot line I'd like to see more in all books is nuanced diversity. More stories that have fully realised, nuanced, realistic characters who happen to be from a minority, rather than stories that have characters from a minority or oppressed group that are driven by it. So instead of a young farm girl grows up to be a great hero to turn the standard young farm boy saves the world fantasy western quest into a female version, a female character who has a part in saving the world but the fact she's female isn't relevant to her saving the world. There are some scenes where the fact she's female means things go better for her. There are some scenes where things go worse. But whether things go better or worse is spread across the broad spectrum of main plot, subplot, and just random colour. So, literature that not only abandons the stereotypes of Western fiction, but moves beyond the need to be actively abandoning them into a world where the stereotypes aren't there because the characters are fully realised. Worlds where it's like Tolkien, but the medievalism doesn't include a gender stereotype. It's just not there. But, uh, so, that's it. There aren't any new plot lines that I can think of. If there are, I'd love to be surprised by them. And if there aren't any out there waiting to surprise me. I'd like to see more metaphysical spiritual fiction where characters don't follow their stereotypes or exist to be a rejection of the stereotype. So that's it for now. Toodaloo!